Tracy Weiland is on a uh, speaking tour, 21st century careers. She makes quite a career out of this herself. She thinks a lot about the impact of technology on careers and has a book coming out called Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends. And uh, she's the author of, uh, of uh, 10 other books, has been uh, a scholar at Stanford University and has held leadership positions at Apple, HP, Cisco, and Apollo Group. And joins us now by FaceTime, Dr. Tracy Weiland from the Bay Area, where you were honored in 2012 as one of the most influential women in Bay Area business. Dr. Weiland, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Roger. Glad you're there. I wanted to uh, walk you through a little bit with the overall question of where are the jobs in 2014? And I know you've been paying particular attention to the impact of technology on these jobs, but I want to also take it from the impact of the consumer of stuff in America on jobs that are being created. That's right, Roger. In fact, the uh, government is saying that four out of five jobs this year in 2014 will be consumer-related, related to consumer products, consumer services. And so that's over, you know, 70% of our country's output. We're a consumer country. So we're, I was looking at this uh, that you had written about the, the trend of presuming. What does presuming mean? <laughs> the presumer is, is that the customer, the, the consumer wants to get more involved with the manufacturing process and even the funding of products. In the news today was the Pebble smartwatch that really started from consumer feedback and now Kickstarter funding. I myself uh, just made a, a carpet using a bunch of squares with different colors and textures, and I was very involved in creating my own product. And, and consumers today are very customized, and they want these opportunities. In the um, impact of technology, it sort of ripples through the digital technology, sort of rippling through society with all kinds of stuff. We did a segment earlier in the show about Google Glass and what information it can give you when you're trying to approach someone on a dating situation. Uh, the digital and social marketing expert is going to be in big demand. Oh, absolutely. If you think about it in the past, we would buy our product and services watching the TV, reading a brochure, or listening to the radio. But today, consumers look at social media and to find what other people's opinions are. So they go to Pinterest, Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter for, for information. So these are all different channels that we need people to be able to market to and understand that unique customer today and where they're buying. What is a portfolio career? You know, Roger, one out of three people today are actually working part-time on project-based work. Now, you can make that into a career. The two areas that are pretty common is marketing, where you may know how to blog, uh, understand social media, understand product development, maybe understand marketing communications. You can create a whole portfolio career around various projects that build your expertise. Another area is technology. Technologists tend to pick up, and engineers and IT people tend to pick up a lot of projects, and then they become portfolio career experts in, in their area of expertise. Now, if you were uh, advising people watching this who have uh, daughters or sons uh, or granddaughters or grandsons in uh, education, somewhere in the education system, where would you be pointing them to take advantage of these opportunities you see coming up in the 21st century? Well, I always in, uh, encourage students to think about what they want to do, but also understand what they do well. And there are some big fields out there where people can participate with a lot of different skill sets. For example, healthcare. Healthcare, you can start with a certification, you can move into a two year degree, you can take the path of a nurse or a doctor, or you can take the path of a technician or a marketing person. So there's a lot of options there. But I, I, I encourage people to really understand your strengths so that you know how to, how to guide yourself. And also collect role models, you know, ask people about what they do so you can see yourself in a position or not. I was just looking at the uh, Consumer Electronics uh, uh, show that's going on, just started in, uh, in Las Vegas. And one of the big issues there is what's happening to the automobile as a result <laughs> of technology and you are also talking about this and uh, and uh, the energy issues as well in creating opportunities for jobs oh absolutely i think the auto industry is amazing in terms of te the technology that they use whether it's in the car itself it's it's like a mobile device now on wheels in fact google announced today that they want an android in every car to actually the factories it's a great it's a great color worker today 
It's not a blue collar or white collar. It's actually a much more highly skilled technical worker using technology such as robotics and additive manufacturing. So I think the auto industry is, is in revival. It's very localized, but it's in revival, and it's an exciting time again. And you link that as well to a revival in U.S. manufacturing, but again with a, with a, with a 21st century twist because of all the technology that's involved and the need for people to know more to be able to get these high-paying jobs. That's right. Uh, you know, manufacturing is a revival, and this really came from the re recruiting communities that I work with, that again, it is localized, but there is demand for project managers and plant managers, but particularly if you are skilled with some of these technologies, in addition to having the operation skills, you can be in high demand, and that's exciting to me. Let's, let's face it, made in America is, is a new mantra in the United States, which I'm thrilled about. Well, no kidding, we all are, and, uh, and particularly with the jobs that will come back to the United States in this new form. And then finally, it's where you look that becomes important, too, for jobs. You have the right skill set, you have the right education, you have the right inclination, you know where you want to go into, uh, and there's all these opportunities coming up, but you don't go to the bigger firms, necessarily. No, and that's a very good point, Roger. In fact, the Kaufman Institute has been promoting a number of research studies that are suggesting that it's the small firms that have the most growth. Just think about how Facebook was small, Google was small, and now they're very large employers here in the Bay Area and all over the world. And so th the second point is the medium-sized firms. The economists brought to our attention that 40 million people in the United States are actually employed by medium-sized firms, but we don't hear about them because a lot of them are private. But these are, there's other employment options, and of course the entrepreneur, which Shark Tank brings a lot of excitement to. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Tracy Wallen, thanks so much, and we're going to look forward to the book. We appreciate you being on today. Thank you, Roger. Thank you.